holds then that if you were trying out the experiment of changing your energy and you and you started getting feedback in your life like well there's a coincidence oh there's an opportunity whoa that came out of nowhere someone just told me the other today was it came out of nowhere and i said i know that's where it came from it came out of nowhere Hello and welcome to the Pacific Channel where we talk about the law of attraction, how to manifest anything you want, meditation and more. One of the things that a lot of us struggle with is how do we navigate through the waters of reality and the negative things in the world around us when we are into this type of metaphysical work? In other words, how do we address the wrong things in the world? Do we fight against them? And if we do, how can we not allow negativity to overcome us in the process? If you study this work, you know that you create your own reality based on the thoughts that you think and the feelings that you emit out into the universe. The problem is that there are a lot of really bad things going on in, in the world. And some think and say that if we don't do anything about it, the evil ones or the cabal or the lead or globalists or whoever are going to take over and humanity will be doomed it's a tough situation for us to be in because of all the people in the world, those who are into this kind of work want nothing more than for the world to be a better place. We want nothing more than for there to be peace and security for all. So what are we to do? Do we bury our heads in the sand and pretend that nothing bad is going on? Or do we stand up against what is wrong and fight back? Are the cabal or elites controlling the law of attraction teachers who basically teach others to allow them to run amok to take more and more power and control over humanity? Or are the law of attraction and metaphysical teachers pointing us to the only answer that will truly work? Dr. Joe addresses this question in this video. See what you think. Let's listen to him now. Uh, I don't know an alternative to uh, what a, what what we perceive uh, is happening in our world today. Uh, and community, to me, is the answer. Community is the only answer of how we could actually take care of one another and inform one another and, and be kind and be caring to one another. And, and, and uh, people around all over the world are disturbed. They're anxious, uh, anxious. They're, uh, they're frustrated. Uh, uh, they're, they're, they're experiencing a whole lot of different emotions by all the things that are happening uh, around us and, and and it's for the most part it's real and and you got to pay attention to it you got to be aware that it's happening uh, but by the same means uh, you can emotionally respond to it because the response uh, emotionally actually cr is is actually reinforcing the same level of consciousness and that's got to change if our response changes then uh, we can actually no longer be controlled by the information that's that, that's be, uh, being given to us. So it's essential for everybody to start their day by deciding who they want to be. Now, if you're truly on the journey and you're feeling stuck, uh, then there's a part of you uh, that you are unconscious to that causes you to keep feeling that same way every day. And I do this in my own life. I take a few moments, really, and I sit down and I go, okay, what are the thoughts that, that, that make me feel that way? Or, well, what are the thoughts that keep me stuck uh, in the same state? And it could be, I'm stuck, or uh, something's wrong with me, you know, whatever, I can't, or nothing's ever going to change, or the world's uh, uh, going to hell. Well, whatever that is, um, none of those thoughts are going to resolve uh, the world's problems, uh, certainly. But if you decide then how you act when you think that way and and you pay attention and observe yourself and become conscious of, of how you act and really truly, truly remember it and review it over and over again so you don't go unconscious and, and you could define the feeling that you have when you feel stuck, whatever that feeling is, and you name it and you look at yourself when you feel that way and you keep remembering what that what 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 you don't want to feel and it takes continuous remembering so you don't forget it's just, you're remembering so you don't go unconscious um that that 
that dismantling of the identity of the personality is is the hardest part of becoming uh, somebody for the world. Um, and and some days are easier than others. Uh, that's for sure. Every person, though, every object, every thing that's known, or every place that's known in your external environment that you perceive with your senses, has a neurological network associated with it because you've experienced it. So the brain is a reflection of your, your known environment. Every experience has an emotion associated with it. So. You have a feeling that's associated with every object, thing, and place in your life, and you can anticipate that feeling because it is known to you. So, many people, in the anticipation of return, returning back to familiar experiences in their life with certain objects and people and things and places, or even their body, uh, the anticipation actually brings up the feeling of that event before it occurs, and it, the the three dimensional reality is such a seductive place that that when we get up from our meditations, all of a sudden we lose the feeling of our future and we're back unconsciously to thinking and feeling equal to everything that we know in our life. There's, that is the hardest part uh, about the process of change because we have to be greater than our environment. And, and you got to disconnect from your environment and, and, and remove all that stimulation so you can remember um, who you do want to be. When you're in that environment, you're going to have different circuitry in your brain uh, that that you are actually priming by your thought of how you're going to be in that situation, and you got to feel the feeling of how the outcome of that situation would would change you, and you'd have to feel that over and over again so you wouldn't forget it continuously. You'd have to think the thoughts that you do want to tell yourself over and over again, and you'd have to repeat them enough times that you remembered them. And the more you repeat them, the more you remember them. And 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 if you get emotional and you get very clear and you get very intentional and you get empowered by it, you if you come out of your resting state and you you feel that feeling, um, the research shows that when you change your energy like that, you tend to remember things more. So you change your energy, you change your emotions, you remember how you do want to behave and how you do want to act. And 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 if it, and in, and if you don't do well that day, then you didn't fail. And uh, you should review what you did well. You should say, what did I do really well today so I can do that again? Let me just review that. I don't care what it is. Just let me remind myself what I am doing well so I can keep doing that and not, not, not forget it. And then you would say, you know, if you were truly on the journey, okay, what person, what circumstance, what piece of news, whatever it was that took my energy, uh, that lowered my energy, what caused me to stop paying attention to my inner world and pay more attention to my outer world. What, what was that? Is there a better way that I can be if that situation happened again? Is there a better way for me to act? Um, let me go step by step and rehearse it in my mind uh, so that if the situation comes up again, I don't have the same experience. I want to evolve my experience, okay? So if I can evolve my experience, then I got to stay in the game. I got to stay conscious with my eyes open. I'm going to practice that. And this is the work. I mean, unfortunately, it's the work. And we're living in a really, really interesting time. And there's not a lot of hope in uh, a lot of the information that we're getting. And yet, I see such great hope uh, for us as human beings more now than ever. Um, if it wasn't just uh, you doing it for you, but it was actually you doing it to be the example for the world. Uh, if you said, okay, um, uh, I want to stand up for justice, I want to stand up for equality, I want to stand up for freedom, whatever it is, what principle that you want to stand up for, you want to stand up because you are a creator, whatever that is, uh, because you want to be more unlimited, you want to be more mystical. Um, this is the this is the plane of three-dimensional reality where you get to demonstrate it. You get to do it. This is the plane of doing. You get to do something in three-dimensional reality. So now you got to demonstrate it. This is the stage where you get to demonstrate who you want to be. Also, let me just be it for the world. What would greatness look like today? What would love do? Um, let me just be the example for the world today. That's all I'm going to do. That's my intention. I'll set my clock or my alarm four times a day if I have to. And... Let me ask myself, how am I doing uh, in the middle of the day? If I'm defaulting, okay, I'm going to get back and I got to overcome myself. And um, 
that 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 ability to shorten your response um, to the people and circumstances in your life uh, it goes so against how we've been programmed in survival uh, in survival um, we're vulnerable uh, to the environment our response to the environment actually weakens us uh, so while you've been doing your meditations for four years now I, I, I hope you've gained some value uh, in the understanding and the information because if you're doing your meditations and you're stuck the next question I'm going to ask you is did you forget why you're doing them uh, why are you doing them? review the science review the information review the content so you have meaning behind it and then really ask yourself when you do your meditations when you get up from your meditation do you believe in your future more or do you believe in it less uh, and if you get up as the same person who sat down and you feel exactly the same, then more than likely you're going to be vulnerable to your environment. And I would suggest that you sit longer or work on overcoming yourself a little bit more and, and dialing down those emotions and conditioning your body emotionally with your heart, what it feels like and keep remembering that feeling. And if you have to bring it up a hundred times, in your meditation so it's no longer how long you meditate it's just that you can bring the feeling up over and over again to the point where you can bring it up with your eyes open in your life or something changes and you feel something differently in your heart and you're gonna keep that feeling alive by staying aware of it by staying conscious of it and then review God if I'm relaxed in my heart and awake in my brain uh, and I can change my energy all right so <laughs> this is the plan of demonstration so let's see if it can produce an outcome in my life Let's, let's have some fun here now. Let's just see. Let's see if I can stay here the whole time that there's a shift, that there's good news, there's an opportunity. I, I believe that there are people doing amazing things right now in the world. I, I've, I've witnessed really genius ideas coming into fruition, and, and I'm, 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 I want to keep those in my mind as well. So it makes sense then that if you were trying out the experiment of changing your energy and you and you started getting feedback in your life like well there's a coincidence oh there's an opportunity whoa that came out of nowhere someone just told me the other today was it came out of nowhere and I said I know that's where it came from it came out of nowhere you 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 start having those events in your life those those opportunities and synchronicities cause you to feel more awake and feel less stuck and so if your meditation really is is designed to create something in your life then you maintain that modified state of mind and body your entire day then the experiment continues and and you should want to evolve your experience every day of three-dimensional reality that would God in one lifetime in one day if we could evolve our experience a little bit more and say hey I didn't react hey I hey I I stayed uh, conscious and aware hey I forgave today hey I demonstrated love uh, for the world today I did something really different than what everybody else would do I felt good about my 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 uh, behaviors today or my my experiences if you were fully engaged in the act of evolution uh, you would want to evolve your experience even to the smallest measure and that takes learning and that takes remembering and that takes repetition and it takes practice absolutely um i i battled the, with the idea of do i really want to be aware of what's going on in the world and do i want to believe everything that i am exposed to and do i not pay attention to it i think it's important that we're informed in the right way i just am not sure that the information that we're receiving is uh, is in the greatest interest of humankind and human beings so there's just a few places left you know a community that that connects in, in 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 a wonderful way and how your heart connects to your brain and that's another great way to navigate through all of this and if enough of us are doing it there will be an emergent consciousness as the veil continues to thin more and more things will become possible for us so what dr joe is saying is that we must acknowledge the problems of the world but if our emotional response is at the same level or frequency of that which we think is wrong, then we are controlled by that information, by those events. From the Law of Attraction teachings, 
You get what you think about whether you want it or not. We live in a yes-based universe. So if you are focused on no more war, for example, the universe hears more war. But if you focus your attention on more peace, the universe hears more peace. In other words, the best way to create what we want for the world is to focus on what we want and offer little to no energy to that which we don't. You cannot solve a problem with the same vibrational mindset that started it in the first place. So the point is to not necessarily pretend that bad things aren't happening, but instead use those events, circumstances, and conditions to get more and more clear as to what we do want and focus on that instead. That's why Dr. Joe said that it's a good idea to focus on freedom or focus on justice or focus on equality. Taking that further, the events of our world could move us to focus on more, more on peace, more on abundance, more on fairness, and more on being autonomous without the need for any external organization such as government to dictate to us how we should live our lives. It starts with us as individuals to get this right for ourselves first. Focus on being conscious throughout your day, just as you are doing during your meditation. Start purposely choosing to think and feel good no matter what is going on. The greatest thing you can do for humanity is to fully step into the powerful spiritual being who you really are. If you like this video, please like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so that you'll be notified when a new video comes out. And now, in the comments below, let us know what you think about how best to deal with the negative things in the world. Thanks for watching and have a great day or night.